qualitative research is primarily about words and their meanings. And I say meanings deliberately because the same word can have quite different meanings to different individuals. Take the word syringe. It means to a dentist uh, relieving pain. To a patient it can mean pain. <laughs> So there are quite a lot of differences, whereas in, in quantitative research what you're much more interested in is numbers and their, and their significance, which may be educationally significant as well as statistically significant. So those are the two basic things and from that you can expand and develop the whole notions of qualitative and quantitative research. Qualitative is more arts based if you like, quantitative is much more science based but both are necessary. First of all qualitative research can be as a preliminary if you're not clear about what you're doing, if you want to explore all of those things, that's really a very important. Secondly, after you've done some quantitative research, there may be particular groups of people, what we call outliers, you may want to uh, study them. That's the kind of structural thing, but there's also what you can tap into with qualitative research. You can tap into attitudes, feelings, you can get at the inner thoughts of a person much, much more than you can on a survey or a questionnaire or a test. The masses of things really which you can, you can get from a qualitative research, much more so than quantitative. I'll give you another example, if you don't mind, from medical education. No amount of statistics and surveys can tell you how it feels to be dying of cancer. You need to talk to people, explore with them all the things of all their inner feelings, which you can't capture in a survey or in a medical diagnosis. You might want to use it particularly uh, if you're uncertain or you've only got a very small sample of people and you're not really clear exactly what you're looking for. For example, there was a very famous study where people were uh, interested in how people, uh, our students read articles. And so what they did was they actually used a qualitative approach of watching a person read a student read an article then asking questions about how he read it and that was really a very powerful way that you couldn't have got at by uh, any method so you use it really for getting at parts of which other forms of research can't easily reach to be able to ask questions skillfully in a way which takes into account the people they're talking to, which listens to what they say uh, sympathetically and perceptively, uh, who respond empathically. They don't actually make judgments about what this person is telling them, but they just listen and nod and accept that what they're doing. And they watch carefully too, because that's ever so important. You can pick up a lot from people's non-verbal cues. So those are the things that are really essential if you're going to be a good qualitative researcher. And you can't just do it, you've got to learn how to do it. The most uh, common method is the interview, but people think about the interview as just a simply a matter of question and answer. It's not. A, a good qualitative interview is open where the interviewee talks much, much more than the interviewer. And it may also have a, a particular task, like we may ask a, question, a scientific question, uh, such as why, uh, why do balls bounce, which may seem trivial, but in fact you can tap into children's and adults' understanding of what's actually going on in terms of physics from relatively straightforward questions. And that's a very important aspect, as well as getting their attitudes and views and opinions. And people neglect uh, that to some extent. You need to be able to listen sensitively and watch carefully what the person is saying and doing and uh, you know, the way they're speaking and their gestures, all of that, you need, that's really is central and you need to develop your skills in that area. 
Of course, there are other things you need to know, like being able to ask questions of the person so that you ask them in a way which is meaningful and safe for them. But even if you're, not, if you're doing direct observation, you've got to ask yourself the right questions. What am I looking for here? What particular thing? Because that again will sharpen your perception and you'll focus on the same, on the, the right thing. I mean, if you take, for example, looking at a painting, uh, if you know what you're looking for, you can see much more than if you just look at the painting. And it's the same with observation and, uh, and interviewing too. The big pitfall is not to um, establish a good relationship with the um, interviewee or participant so that they block, they don't actually tell you what they really think and so on. So you never find that, you never get into the self-disclosure, the self-revelation, the confidential remarks because you've blocked it by being aggressive or far too superior, all of that. So I think it's very important to establish a good relationship uh, empathic, empathically with your uh, person. And not to make judgments, just have a good relationship with them and let them tell you what they want. Well, the most common and probably the most ill-used uh, method of research are questionnaires. Um, the ubiquitous questionnaire and you really need to spend a lot of time designing it. The second one is structured interviews and they're fairly useless frankly because you might as well send them a questionnaire if you're just going to ask them closed questions. Um, a third approach is um, direct uh, observation which is very structured. And that can also be quite a powerful uh, um, way of checking what people do. It's really an evaluation exercise rather than an exploratory uh, exercise. But again, that's very, very useful. So those, I would say, were my three main uh, approaches. The first classic error is they make them far too long. Uh, and they ask lots of questions which are not relevant, which they stick in just in case instead of thinking out clearly what exactly do they want to find out. The second question is, the second weakness is, the questions are really ambiguous. There's what in some sociologists call high context. Unless you know what was in the mind of the questioner, you wouldn't be able to understand what the question is about. And so you somehow you've got to think about it in relation to the particular people whom you are question, giving the questionnaire to and express it in language which they will understand. That really is, so those are two of the two really major things I would say about questionnaires. Let's begin with the questionnaire. Make sure it's well designed, that is it's meaningful and it answers the questions which you want it to answer. So you've, then you've got to do into what you're, into your survey. And you've got to be realistic. You, nobody's going to uh, give you millions of pounds to do an, a cross-national survey. So you just have to take what you've got and do the best you can with it. But make sure you've got a reasonably sized sample for what you're doing. That's also difficult to say, it depends on the question, but you know, 100 to 200 is really very comfortable uh, to have it. You then need to think about whether you're going to split it in some way, because every question, in a sense, has a hypothesis under it, including the biographical data. So supposing um, you, you're doing a questionnaire on what their attitude is towards statistics amongst psychologists, say, then you might want to say, well, is there a difference between males and females on this? Is there a difference between people in their first year and in their final year? And you need to think about all those different questions. But the more of those questions you have, the more lengthy your data analysis will be, because then you come to the second, which is the really important bit for me to publish, and to interpret and publish. The first thing is to remember that these numbers are really a symbolic representation of the uh, meanings of the words and the, that can be quite uh, a tenuous uh, link. 
The second thing is that to realize that you can't ever get a perfectly statistical uh, analysis. Whatever you do, there are things, you know, you could find slight criticisms of it. So you just choose what's, what's best for you. And I suppose finally, don't be um, afraid of using um, simple techniques rather than highly complex ones. Simple techniques give you a much clearer picture. Complex techniques can obscure. Uh, so go for, go for the simple. Occam's razor in the full time.